I think the majority of us did not like it, and it just subtle inconsistencies mixed with just it. They said they took two years to film those six episodes. Yeah. Well, it had a lot of problems with like getting the actors in and all that stuff, right? Like they all went off. They're not doing things. it. Just the one. Who? Well, Jason. Peter Dinklage. Peter Dinklage was busy. When they filming a. And what's her name? Something for him. Yeah. What's his name? What's her name? Oh, uh, the Dragon Lady. Khaleesi? Dragon Lady. I yeah. I don't. I don't. I was gonna. I don't watch the show. I've never seen an episode of the show. So. Well, she had a lot going on. She filmed like five movies during the past two years. Yeah. Which, kudos to her. She's really put in some. She's really good. They gave her this character, and she's ran with it. Here's some Game of Thrones spoilers. We're not waiting for these. Game of Thrones spoilers right now. Five, four, and here's what happens. Okay. <laughs> The dragons, right? She has the dragons in season five. They start dying off left and right. You think she'd get a clue and say, maybe I should not sacrifice my dragons? I don't know. I just didn't like the last season. That's my wild card. It's been on my mind lately. And I know it, it ended like what, a couple of months ago, but yeah, it's still there. It sticks with you though. I mean, you know, the anger <laughs> of oh. what it should have been. Dude. You know, because it's the writing was so inconsistent in the last season. It was like, why? Why are we even bothering with this? But it was so good up until then, and that's that's the part that hurts. Because you still go to HBO, and you're like scrolling through. It's like, oh, Game of Thrones. Yeah, but you, you know what it is, though. But you know, <laughs> it's it's the producers. They they know that they're going to be working on the new Star Wars, and that's where their mind is. Their mind is in a galaxy far, far away. You know, instead of doing well done. what they need to be doing with the Game of Thrones. Well, I think I think the majority of what I read too was that um, because the books weren't written, they had a basic outline of what Martin was going to do or whatever. So they just followed that outline. So it wasn't as rich to pull from. I mean, but I don't know. That's just what I heard. But still, even with that though, even having like a light outline. How many seasons did they have to really yeah. understand where this was going? Yeah, it doesn't make any sense that it would just yeah. all of a sudden be... Especially That's like, for two years and for six episodes, they should have done better. I was like, look, Iron Man 12. I show, but I feel you. you know? Iron Man 12 is coming out. I don't know. Tony is doing something. Maybe he is, maybe he isn't. But uh, figure it out. Yeah. They'll figure it out. It you, well, you would think... You should be able to rely on the level of talent that they've had over all these seasons because their writers are not a bunch of Muppets who have no idea what they're doing. These guys yeah. are seasoned. Um, they, they have a real feel for that, uh, for that genre. Um, and it was captivating. Even, even the parts that I did not really care for over, over you know, the various seasons, they were always minor plot points or, or something that there was so many other great things going on that... I didn't really feel any need uh, to be all that upset over it because there was so much to love. Right. And there was just nothing to love in this last season. At all. Not well, even a little. I, I will say this. Arya, my favorite throughout all the seasons. She's Arya's the great. only character that really that really had an arc all the way through. Like, you got to see her character go from a little defenseless girl into faceless into like what we saw at the end, which was like she's about to go on adventures on her own with Needle. That was cool. That was cool. I, I am game for that. They did HBO. justice by Arya. I'll give you that. You Pick know. her up. Give her her own series. <laughs> Let her cruise the, the, the ocean. Arya the series. I would watch this. I don't know. Yeah, I, I think the majority of the people I know would watch it. I, uh, I don't watch the show, but I would watch that because I like, I like that. <laughs> I'm going to watch the first one uh, at some point. <laughs> but, but I actually like, uh, I like Macy Williams. I think she's cool. I've seen her in other things, um, and I think she's, she's pretty cool. And I like, I didn't watch the show, but I did follow what was going on during all the seasons. I, I just I kind of like to keep abreast of what's going on. So I did watch clips on YouTube and things like that. 
Uh, I did watch clips of the last season, and there were a couple that were pretty cool, like her taking out the Frost. Oh, the Frosty guy. <laughs> uh, I don't know who he is. They killed Frosty. Yeah, they, they took his Frosty magic hat man. off. <laughs> and then uh, the yeah, Night the, King, I believe, is here. Yeah. Okay, that guy, uh, Cold Guy. Frosty. Cold Guy. So the Cold uh, Miser. Ice Man. <laughs> Ice Man. Ice Man. Captain Cold. <laughs> yeah, Captain Cold. But uh, <laughs> yeah, you love Captain Cold. Yeah, but that that was probably like just out of the clips that I saw. That was that was pretty cool. I, and I watched a lot of. Uh, crowd reaction of that of that scene and like people in bars watching it and all that kind of stuff and they they went wild for it so yeah, they did that right I guess well in so many they places right they let us go though yeah. the Clegane Bowl was a giant letdown yeah we everybody had been waiting for the two Clegane brothers the mountain and the hound to finally have their big fight and it really didn't turn out to be much we waited a lot of seasons to just basically get eh Okay, so now they're both dead. You know? I was upset they fought on the stairs. I, it's one of those things that's like, it can be done well. Like uh, Revenge of the Sith. It can be done real, well. Somebody on the high game, somebody on the low. Somebody has a high ground and they play to that. They say it. The mm-hmm. problem is you're dealing with uh, the mountain and uh, uh, the, hound. the hound. And the mountain is gone he's this big zombie guy so you don't have like dialogue so it's, you're stuck with the hound kind of doing his own thing what would have been great is if the hound would just like walk down to that open area they were almost there anyway they were just got to that little open area just went to town on each other i like how they ended in fire though because the hound was definitely afraid of fire so yes. it was a nice he touch. didn't care at that point, he was like, if I'm taking you out, I'll go into the fire again. Well, he had said before he got there he didn't expect to come back. Mm-hmm. So he knew he was going to die. I just uh, wish it would have been done right in that little center area. Let's get a throw down. The, the problem is there's such a long list of what we wish they would have done. <laughs> in one yeah, episode the, to do it all in. Yeah, which was just ridiculous. You know, they, uh, they sacrificed the integrity of a lot of characters on that show, and I'm very disappointed in it. Yet, at the same time, I don't like the people who are saying, I'm never, ever, ever going to watch this show again. Really? You know? Look, here's the thing. If something has given you joy for years on end, and there's so much that you were able to cheer about and be happy about and feel moved by, okay, so the ending was not great. Okay, the ending was a disaster. I actually but. think every every show has a weak season, or uh, sometimes two. But and it's usually the last one. It, sometimes it can be the last one. Buffy the Vampire Slayer, holy... Buffy the Vampire Slayer for me was season four. It's That is a hard season for me to get through. Like, I, I fight all the way through. I've, I've sat through that season twice, and it was a struggle to get through that season. I just hated that season, but then five, six, and seven just totally made it up for me. Hmm? I don't remember it that well. Yeah. Season, was that the one where they did the musical? No, season six was the musical. Season four was I think they I think they just started college. And that was Seth uh She was dating Seth she was Green dating the military guy. Oh that um thing. I can't think of his name. Flynn. Flynn, yeah. It was just weird. Oh alright. Yeah. It was just Calm a weird down. yeah. I had a moment. I was very season, excited. Season five is actually my favorite season. But still, I loved I, yeah. uh, the, the goddess chick, the evil. What's her name? I can't think of her name now. Hera. Uh, Blank on the name. Uh, yes, it was Hera. Yeah. <laughs> it makes Hera. sense. Yeah. It makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Well, yeah, the thing about it is when, when Joss Whedon stopped running the show and Marty Knoxon took over, there was a, a drop in quality immediately in every single way, which is not fair. Because that's like saying, well, we were doing a show. And Steven Spielberg was running it. And then when he left, well, the next guy wasn't as good. Really? You think? Yeah, like of course. Steven Spielberg. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, uh, Joss went over to go work on some other stuff. And, you know, he wanted to, he was doing Angel. And I think he was, he was getting ready to do Firefly, but that wasn't until later. But, yeah, I mean, it happens. There, every show I've ever watched, though, if I've watched it all the way straight through, 
there's been like one or two seasons that's a struggle. And I think for the Game of Thrones, it was the last one. Uh, absolutely, it's got to be. Uh, big countdown. As soon as I'm done talking about this next thing, we're then going to talk about Avengers Endgame with spoilers. Oh, my God. It's going to be so exciting, but first. Oh, my God, this is spoil. <laughs> my wild card is something very simple. Um, as you can see, I've got myself a gray beard going on right now because I can't grow any other kind. But um, that is because I am auditioning. Is because I am ancient. Thank you for saying old. That actually felt good. Yeah, but I, I'm a very old man, and uh, I am auditioning for the play Dracula uh, this next weekend. Uh, I am hoping to go out for the part of Van Helsing. Um, you know, but that's basically I'm in a Dracula mode right now because I'm looking at all that. Um, and I am such a big fan of the old Universal horror movies. I don't know how y'all feel about those. Yeah, and, absolutely. Yeah, all the old Bela Lugosi, mm -hmm. you know, uh, Boris Karloff. Jr. Absolutely. You know, uh, I love all that stuff. Um, but I've watched Lugosi so many times that I, I wanted to get, um, I wanted to see if I could possibly get myself something a little bit more modern, kind of energize myself a little bit. And I managed to start watching some of the Christopher Lee Hammer films. Mm -hmm. um, if you're the sort of person that has never watched a Hammer film, you need to turn off what you're watching right now. No, don't do that. That's us. Wait till you're done watching us, and then go watch a Hammer movie. Um, Hammer was incredibly violent, incredibly gory. The blood was so red. It was like the reddest right, thing right. ever. You know, the brightest red you could possibly imagine, and it was very liquidy and just, oh my God, it was so over the top. That was what Hammer was all about, was being very over the top. Um, but, you know, what I enjoyed about it was uh, Christopher Lee was so much more diverse of, um, than people give him credit for. You know, all they think about is, well, he played Sauron and all that, and he didn't. He was wonderful in that. Um, as a human being, as just a person, and I'm not going to go through all of it, you know, but feel free to go on the net and take a look at some of the facts about Christopher Lee's personal life. The man was just a walking wonder. Um, but when he played Dracula, he made him uh, energetic and sexy and powerful. And, you know, uh, he makes Bela Lugosi look very stilted and over the top, which is correct for what they were trying to do in that period of time. But there's something about the way that Christopher Lee was so natural and so modern day and down to earth, it really kind of hits you a lot closer to the bone. At any rate... I was very much into Hammer and Christopher Lee over this last month, and um, I'm hoping that this will somehow help me channel some greater power to allow me to actually audition and win a role in the Dracula play this weekend. If not, then we can all get together and curse them. Well, he's already dead. Can't kill no, I meant the people doing the play. Oh, do the I'm okay, Yes. <laughs> anyway. Um, so that is my my wild card, but now now we're going to talk about Avengers and we're going to give away some spoilers. Well, uh, spoilers. Yes, loads of spoilers. And since I threw it to Jeff the first time, I'm going to throw it to Quincy now. Go ahead. Oh, snap. Okay, so Avengers with spoilers. Okay, so for me, as you can see, I'm wearing a Captain America shirt. Uh, there's a reason for that. Captain America is my favorite Avenger, and uh, I've I've been reading him since I was a kid, and I was super excited that they were going to be making the Captain America movies that weren't the ones from the 70s and the one from the 90s because they sucked. Even though the ones from the 70s, I watched the hell out of when I was a kid. Um, so I was really excited that they were going to have to end it the way they ended it with him. I thought it was a perfect ending for him. I know it doesn't make sense cohesively through, you know, because he, he, he went off and lived his life in, you know, that timeline or whatever, but for me, it, it was it was perfect. He got a huge send off. He was like badass through the whole film. He was funny through the whole film. It's like, it's like he was always kind of had like kind of a sense of humor. But they actually gave him like a full tilt 
sense of humor in this, where it's like you see you've seen him grow from being that guy that was like totally didn't know what the hell was going on to being a little more acclimated and a little more American, American, and um, and then he got he got the ultimate thing where he got Thor's hammer, which was like for me was like just a beautiful beautiful moment because that's like one of my favorite because in the in the Avengers movie the second one where he moved the hammer it's like I knew at some point he was going to get that hammer and to have it finally happen was just beautiful for me so that's my favorite part um the other thing that I I have a love-hate relationship with what people are calling Professor Hulk because I, I do remember in the comic books where he was smart Hulk for a while working for a government organization and I read a few of those and I thought it was pretty cool but you always kind of miss Angry Hulk so I, I wish there were a few moments in this film where they gave him an, an Angry Hulk um, where he just like maybe like during the final battle he kind of became angry and just started smashing but um, but you can't fault Mark Ruffalo he did a great job with it it's it was cool to see his version of the Hulk I'm, uh, I'm glad that he he's the only actor that's ever actually portrayed the Hulk so to see him do his thing was like awesome but I would have liked to have seen Angry Hulk a little bit more so that was kind of disappointing for me and then my other favorite part is uh, Hawkeye because I, I love I, I never got into Hawkeye in the comics uh, I didn't get into Hawkeye until because I always thought he was just a green arrow knockoff so like why do I care but Jeremy Renner really did something with that character and it made me like him so just that opening scene where he's like teaching his daughter how to shoot and the whole family just leaves. Like the whole time I'm watching, I know exactly what's gonna happen. I know exactly what's gonna happen. But I'm on the edge of my seat freaking out. At one point I remember going, oh no, 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 no. this is not good. And my wife was like, shh, I'm like, uh. And she's like, what are you talking about? She's like, oh, they're gonna disappear. Yeah, so. Yes, and to see him come in and be Ronin, I wish there was a little more Ronin. I would have liked to have seen, like, how he became Ronin, like, do, like, a little montage or, like, a five-minute scene, you know, of, of more Ronin just to kind of get into that character space. But I think it was supposed to be more of a shot that you see him going in, like, you, you, you're not supposed to know who it is. And right. then when uh, he's standing there at the end and she shows up and he takes off the hood, then you're like, oh, shit, that's Hawkeye. Like, he didn't take that very well, did he? You know, so, mm. so I did like that. Understandably so. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. he was um, oblivious for the most part. Like, he's just on his ranch with his ankle bracelet. Yeah, he didn't know what was he going on. He had no idea. And then all of a sudden everything was gone. Exactly. 